Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this big Lumagurumi cow design, which is designed by me. So here we have the two big cows. I absolutely love this design. I already kind of shared it on Instagram and it seems like you guys really like it too, so I'm happy you like it. But it's basically just a big version of my smaller cow. So here's the design. It's really fun. I'm going to be completely honest with you, I haven't done the band count yet, so I don't know how band heavy this is. Shall we do a guesstimation? That's probably wrong. My guess is it probably takes around 700 bands, but if you want the official band count, you're going to have to check down in the description box below and there'll be the band count, the pattern, the whole thing. But here is the design and I absolutely love it. I didn't think I was going to like a big version of my cow so much because I love the little version, but these guys are just so fun and I don't know, I've been having like a fun time experimenting with making my designs bigger because I do like to make them small, but then there's just something fun about them when they're bigger, I don't know. Um, anyways, here's it in comparison to my small or regular cow design. It is significantly bigger, at least I feel like it's significantly bigger. I mean, it's a pretty big size difference. Um, Actually, one of the hardest parts about making this design was like deciding if it was big enough because I know I tend to lean smaller So I was like am I making it big enough? Is that too big? But um, yeah, it, he was fun to make. I like him. So yeah, today I'm gonna be showing you how to make your own big cow I'm also sorry if I seem like a bit sillier or just a bit everywhere um, I'm filming at night for the first time. I usually film all my tutorials first thing in the morning but because of school and everything it's looking like night might, might be the only time I have to film tutorials, so you're gonna just have to bear with me. I really don't like filming at night because I think the lighting looks better in the day. Um, I'm using my light. I know you guys should still be able to see, but I just like filming during the day, so this is a little bit different for me, but we should be okay. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about these guys. We're gonna get into making them. Like I already mentioned, um, <laughs> these guys obviously are not super band light. I don't think they're super band heavy either. Maybe some kind of odd in between. So check the description if you want the band count. Um, and yeah, I feel like there's so many different color combos you guys can do for these guys. Um, these are some pride cows I made for June. They're still in my Etsy shop if you want to check them out. So you can do all kinds of different stuff with the colors. Here's like a rainbow cow I made again for pride, but yeah, so you can do all kinds of different stuff. Um, today I'm going to be making a like pink cow. I like to think like strawberry cow kind of thing. So you guys can already kind of see the pink bands I set out. I didn't think they were going to be in shot, but they are. But I'm just going to be using like a lighter pink for the like lighter part on the cow or like the white in this cow. And then for the um, spots, I'm going to start by just using uh, Sweets Pink. And I think I'm going to do this other pink I have for the hooves. Oops. Um, haven't really decided yet, but this is just going to be a very pink cow. Uh, I also thought it'd be fun since I'm posting this tutorial on Valentine's Day to do like a pink cow, like a pinky theme, even though obviously many of you won't be watching this when it first goes out on Valentine's Day. I just thought it'd be something fun to do. So yeah, those are the colors I'm using. Light pink for the lighter part, and then I'm just using like a darker sweets pink for the darker part. And I have this third pink that I may bring in at some point. I don't know. I'm a little undecided on the colors. I feel like I just have to start to decide what I did with them. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> of course you're gonna need a hook. I'm gonna be using my double-ended hook today. You don't need a double-ended hook. This is just my favorite hook. And I always get the question of where I got this hook from. Um, sadly, Rainbow Loom used to sell this hook. They don't anymore. So it's an old Rainbow Loom hook, but you can use a Rainbow Loom hook, crochet hook, just whatever you have. Um, you're also gonna want a C-clip or just something to mark your rows with. I'll be using a C-clip today. Um, you could use a stitch marker, a paper clip, just something to mark where you start and end, an S-clip, a G-clip, whatever you have. And now I think that we're officially going to get started. Sorry that was a bit of a long intro, but we're going to get into it. Um, after I pick up bands, because I forgot to do that. <laughs> oh god. You know, it has been a hot minute since I've like- is that a saying? Is that a saying? Once again, I might be a little much in this tutorial. I feel like I shouldn't apologize for that. Anyways, um, it's been a while since I filmed a tutorial, probably about a month. Um, I've mentioned this, I'm picking up bands by the way, I'm not just talking, but I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm currently attending university and I went back to school recently for the spring semester and it has been insanely busy, so that's been what's up, but I'm excited to be filming tonight. Um, also just a quick mention, I realized I forgot, I forgot to say, um, 
This could technically also be a bull design. I know when I made this first cow tutorial, I said he could be a bull as well. So you can fix this design to be a bull if you want to make a big bull. Also, difficulty-wise, this design is pretty easy. I'd say it's about the same difficulty as my other cow. It might be a little bit easier because I've noticed bigger designs are kind of easier for beginners. So it might be a slight bit easier. I think the most challenging part about this design is probably just placing all the, um, like, spots. But... Sorry, um, but you don't have to place the spots exactly where I do and you'll see as we're going along the pattern I'm gonna tell you where I'm putting the spots, but if I'm being perfectly honest You can place the spots wherever you want. I'm just gonna tell you where to place them because I know some people like ooh, Just watch my camera like knowing where to place them That might be one of the longest intros I've ever had in a tutorial But we are getting started finally <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry um, Okay, let me move my light a little closer is that better? Hopefully. Sorry. Some minor light adjustments and then I think we're gonna be ready to go once my camera focuses. If it would focus. <laughs> See, it's just kind of hard when I'm just working with my light. Focus. There we go. Now we're good. So we're gonna start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So we have one, two, and then three. And then we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then we're gonna go back through the cap band. We're gonna pull a band through just the cap band. We're gonna put both ends back on our hook. We're gonna push the back loop over the front loop. And then we're gonna push this loop from last time over as well. And I'll show you what I do again, but I think I need to zoom in a little bit more, so I'm just gonna pause real quick to adjust my setup. Okay. So we have two stitches in the cap band right now. We wanna make six stitches total, so we have to go back in and do four more. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back through the cap band. We're gonna pull a band through just the cap band, put both ends back on our hook, push the back loop over the front loop, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to repeat that three more times. So we have six loops in the cap band in total. So we'll pull a band through the cap band, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, push the loop from last time over as well. We do that two more times. So one, and then two. And now you should have six loops. So once you think you have six loops, you're going to want to count to make sure, to make sure. So you'll start by counting the one on your hook, so you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And once you've made sure you have 6 loops, instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go in through this first loop here. So this one, right here. I know this might look like a loop, but it's not, so we're going to go through this one. We're going to do the same thing, so we're just going to pull a band through, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And then we are going to put our C-clip onto this band, like that. So that was the first step. Um, for the next step, we are going to be increasing everything. And all that means is that basically every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And I'm picking up a few bands. We're also going to start adding spots this row. And I'll tell you when we're doing it, but um, yeah. Also, if you get lost on where the spots are placed, I have a pattern on how to read my... I have a video on how to read my patterns and I'm gonna like be walking you through it but you can always check the pattern down in the description to help you follow along as well I think a lot of people find it helpful if you do both so yeah yeah hopefully, hopefully everything's fine okay so like I said we're gonna be increasing everything so this first loop here already has one stitch in it but because we're increasing we want to go back in and do another stitch and that'll be an increase. So all an increase basically is, is you're putting two stitches in one loop. So I'll show you again in the next one in case you're confused. So we'll go into this next loop. We'll make one stitch. Then we'll go back in, do a second stitch. And then that'll be an increase. And we just keep doing this all the way around until we get to our C-clip. So we did two increases already. And on this next loop here is where we're going to add our first spot. And 
to add the spots on this guy is really easy. Um, I know if you've made some of my other designs, we usually slip stitch when we flip colors, but for this guy, you don't do that. You just switch whatever band color you're using. So whenever we put a spot, we don't do anything fancy. You're literally just gonna switch what color band you're using. So for me, that's my um, Sweets Pink. And we're just gonna do the same thing. So this is the third loop we're gonna be changing. We're still increasing, but the only difference is we're using our spot color. So we'll just make an increase using our spot color. And don't accidentally let go of all your loops. Um, let me fix my... Okay, sorry. I just accidentally let go of everything. Um, okay. And that's it. So, like I said, no slip stitching or nothing. You literally just flip what color you're using and you just switch to your spot color. It's also a little hard to see that my color is different, but hopefully you're okay. So, that was our only spot for this row. So, the rest of the way, we're just going to be using our light pink color and we're just increasing. So, nothing. We're doing the same thing. It's just we switched colors for our spot. So, we're just increasing the rest of the way. I'm not really explaining because I don't know what to say. Okay, so once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a single stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then you're going to move it up. So you're going to take your C-clip off this loop and move it up onto the loop that is on your hook. Like that. Hold up. Sorry. Okay, I'll do that after. I was going to adjust my light, but um... Once you move your C-clip up, we're just going to want to count around to make sure we have 12 loops because we increased, we should be at 12 now. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you should be at 12 loops and then we just have this one increase we did in our spot color. And you can kind of see there's the two glittery loops right there. So that's it for that step. Um, I just want to adjust my light real quick because for some whatever reason it's like really bright. There we go. Okay, <laughs> but for the next row, we are going to be increasing every other. So what that basically means is we're just going to be alternating between doing a single stitch and then an increase all the way around until we get to the C-clip. So we're just alternating between single stitches, increases, and we are st still adding more spots this row. And yeah, it would help if I could um, read what the heck I wrote, but you know, it's always a lovely time. Attempting to read my own patterns Anyways, like I said, we're increasing every other so this first one's gonna count as our single stitch So the next one will be our increase. So we're gonna do an increase on the second one I keep accidentally dropping my loops oh my God. Okay, so we just did an increase so the next stitch is gonna be a single stitch so this one will be a single stitch Actually, I kind of messed up. Um, okay, so if you're not doing the spots exactly where I am, you didn't mess up. The only thing is that this first increase should have been in our other color. I messed up what color I'm using. Sorry about that. I got confused, but... So, th we have our first stitch with the C-clip on it, and then this one, next one is still an increase. I just kind of messed up because we should be have done it in our spot color. So, just redo those two, the first increase in your spot color and then we're good again. So this one will be a single stitch and then the next one will be an increase. Like that. And then these next two stitches are going to be in our spot color so we're going to get our other color. So this one right here will be a single stitch because we just did an increase and the next one will be an increase because we just did a single stitch. So I hope what you're, 
I know things can get confusing when I'm trying to explain like both color placement as well as what we're doing per row, but we're still increasing every other. So you can kind of see this one was an increase. So that one's a single stitch and then this one was an increase single stitch. So we're still just alternating between doing single stitches and increases. Um, I'm just also letting you know where to put the, the, my mind blanked, the spots. Yeah, there we go. So we're just going to keep going. Um, this one is increase, so the next one will be a single stitch. Increase. And then a single stitch. And then this next two loops again, we're going to switch over to our spot color. So we're going to get our spot color. And we're just going to do the next two loops in our spot color. If it's an increase, you do the increase in the spot color. And if it's a single stitch, you do the single stitch in the spot color. Like that. We are almost at our C-clip. I'm also debating if the lighting looks really bad or not. I can't really tell. I'm sorry if it does. This is my first tutorial I'm filming at night, so I'm sorry if, like, it's not the best quality. I'm trying my best, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. Like that. And now if we count around, we should be at 18 loops, so we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And your cap should be looking something like this. So for the next row, we're going to be increasing every third. Um, kind of similar to what we've been doing, but this time we're going to do two single stitches. And then on the third loop, we do an increase. So we just do that all the way around. We do two single stitches and then an increase, two single stitches and then an increase. And same as last time, we're still adding spots. Um, yeah. Okay. I was checking something on my pattern, but we're good. Okay. So once again, right away on these first two, we're going to do our spot color. So we're going to get our darker color or just whatever color I guess you're using for the, spot, for the spots. So this one. The one, with the, C -clip, the one with our C-clip on is going to count as our first loop, and then this one will be our second loop. Well, our second single stitch, so we have one, two. And then on this third loop here, we're going to do our increase, so do an increase. So you just put two stitches in that one loop. And we're pretty much just going to do that all the way around, so we have one, two single stitches, and then an increase. We're going to repeat that. Also, like I said, on the first two loops here, we did our spot color. So now we're going to flip back to our lighter color. And I'm picking up bands again. You know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I've been apologizing for stuff so much, but it's been bad. Uh, I don't know what's up. I feel like it's, maybe it's because I haven't filmed a tutorial in a while that I'm like, oh, am I doing everything right? But I've just... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I got more bands. But we just did an increase, so we gotta do two single stitches. So we got one, two. Okay. And then we're gonna do our increase. So on this one here, we do our increase. And I'm going to show you how to count real quick in case you've never um, counted before, but I'm looking at my pattern and the, sti the spots for this row go on, go on the 2nd, 3rd, 8th, 7th, 8th, 11th, 12th, and 15th, and 14th. So if you've never counted for my patterns, basically the first one is the first loop and then we kind of just keep going. It gets a little confusing with increases, so it's kind of easier to count the increases as one. So we have one, two, three four, five, six. So then these next two loops are seven and eight. Um, if the counting confuses you, you can kind of know you're in the right spot if you've just done 
like two sets of like our kind of like sequence I guess so if you've done like I mean you can kind of tell where I am in the pattern too um counting is a little confusing I explain it better in my patterns video but basically on these next two loops we're gonna do we're gonna go back to our spot color so we're gonna get our darker color and we're gonna do the next two for me it's single stitches in our darker color and then once we get to our increase we're gonna flip back to our lighter color like that then we're just gonna keep going um, the next spots are on the 11th and 12th and I know this one's the 9th so I'll just keep counting that's at least how I do it whenever I make these things so this is 9 and then we have 10 Oh, I think that's wrong. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Shoot. Um, okay, hold up. I'm a little confused by my pattern. Doing the spots is always so confusing because if I write something down wrong, I'm just lost. Um, I may have wrote this down wrong. That or I'm thinking I actually forgot to add a spot last row, so we're like out one. It's not the biggest deal. Um, I'm just going to keep going until I get to here. On these first two, I'm pretty sure we do um, our spot color again. Actually, let me pause and double check. Okay, I read the pattern past me, wrote down the pattern correctly. If you guys have watched multiple of my tutorials, you should know that I always like mistrust whatever I wrote in my pattern. I'm like, that doesn't seem correct. And then I go off to check and it's correct every time. I think I just need to like trust past me more. Like, she knows what she's doing. Um, Ignore me shoving my hook in already, but <laughs> okay, so I was right in the pattern and I'm right in the pattern in the description. Um, so on the next two, we're gonna do our darker spot color again. So what do we do last? Okay. And if an increase is in the spot color, just do both. Do only, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Explaining things. Um, so this first one, is a single stitch and we're gonna do it in our spot color and the second one is an increase but we're only gonna do the first half in our spot color and then we're gonna do our the second half in the light pink and you can do both in the spot color it's not the biggest deal um, but that's just how I did it and then we're gonna do hold up okay and then we're gonna do one single stitch in our light pink color, and then these next two are gonna be in the darker color, or our spot color. I should be calling it our spot color. Oh, they're like an eyelash in <laughs> my bands. Honestly, that could have been an eyelash or it could have been a racer dust. I feel like my light's still too bright, like, ugh. Oh, that's better, that's way better. Okay, so that was one. And we're still increasing every third. I'm kind of focusing more on spot placement, but we're still doing the same thing. So we're doing two single stitches and then we're doing an increase. I just did an increase, so the next two will be single stitches. And that was the last spot for the row. So the rest of these are just, um, just regular light pink, I guess. But we're gonna do that and then once we get to our c-clip we're just going to make a single stitch on the one that has a c-clip on it and move it up oops <laughs> just totally missed there okay my camera went out of focus so after that row and i know it was very confusing we had a lot going on but just to recap what we did we were increasing every third, so we did two single stitches and then we did an increase. And I was kind of focusing more on the spot color placement, so we just placed the colors for our spots. Again, if you don't have to follow how I place the spots, you can place them however you want. But if you did, your cow should be looking something like this. I don't know why I almost said dragon. My brain was like, they're dragon, and I was like, no, cow, I'm sorry. Um, I shouldn't apologize. What? Um, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, after this row, you should be at 24 loops, so let's count and make sure we have 24. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm pretty sure I have 24. I think I just counted wrong, but I'll go one more time off camera. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52
2021, 22, 23. Why do I only have 23 again? Hold up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I have 24, I just can't count. Okay. So now's where the pattern's gonna get a, a bit repetitive, but also we're still adding spots. So we're doing the same thing, but we're still placing spots. So I'm gonna stay on camera for all these rows, but I guess we're just not increasing anymore. So it makes it a little bit easier because we're not having to deal with where the increases are on top of where the spots are, but yeah. So we're gonna do four rows of single stitches. Um, Basically, we're just doing one stitch per loop, single stitches all the way around, so we're doing four rows normal. Um, but like I said, we're still placing spots, and if you want to see where the spots are placed before I tell you, um, you can check the pattern down in the description, but I'm just gonna like kind of walk you through it. Because I think that's the easiest way to explain it in tutorials rather than telling you, okay, this one goes on like the 13th loop. I think it's easier if I just like loom with you and then be like, hey, it goes on this one. I don't know. <laughs> I find that easier, so we're gonna do that. So for this first row, we actually don't have a single spot until the 14th loop, until like the 14th loop, wait, no, 14th, 13th, <laughs> 13th and 14th loop, which are these two over here. So basically this whole first bit that's like up until like you get to like where the third spot is, as you can see, this one down here, this is all just single stitches in light pink. So we're just going to do that and then I'll show you again where to place the spots when we get there and how to count so you're not lost. But yeah. Also, I think I'm just going to talk for a bit while we loom, because this cow's big. It's going to take me a minute to go around, so I'm going to just tell you what's been up. Like I said, it's been... We're just doing single stitches, by the way, and if you don't know what a single stitch is, it's what we've been doing. It's just where you do one stitch per loop. Until we get to the secret loop. And that's basically all it is. Well, let's we get to the spot colors. But yeah, like I said, we're doing single stitches until we get to where this spot is. So this is just all light pink. So yeah. Now that we've covered that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been a hot minute since... I don't know why I keep saying a hot minute. Who even says that? Anyways, my brain at nighttime is lovely. Um, but it's been a minute since I've made a tutorial. Um... So that's been interesting. I think school was just insane. Um, so if you don't know, I'm attending a university. I'm studying painting, so I'm in the fine arts, as I should be. Um, I still love looming, but it definitely takes away a lot of my time from looming. But honestly, it has been time as to why I haven't filmed a tutorial, because I've been working on like this big cow design and like my off times from classes and stuff. And I still loom, but it's just like, I haven't had the time to sit down and film a tutorial. And it's just been insane, because like, I got here and then it was kind of like settling in because if you don't know I moved oh I also didn't mention that if you're like huh the desk looks different yeah I'm in a different apartment now so I have a different desk <laughs> which is why the background's different yet again I think while I'm in college and for a bit we're just gonna be changing places a lot hopefully I won't have to move again but I had to move again I'm still at the same school I just moved where I live so that was fun um, so like the whole first part was kind of like me settling in and we're gonna put the story on pause because we're we're right by our spots. So hold up, I'm looking. Okay. So okay. So our spots. We're gonna be putting. Um, okay. We're gonna be putting the darker color on the 13th and the 14th. So to count to make sure we're at the 13th and 14th, we're just going to go backwards. So we're going to start by counting the one on our hook. We're just going to count backwards to the seat loop to see where we are in our pattern. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we know this next one's 13 and then this is 14. So those two are going to be in our darker spot color. So we're just going to do the next two stitches in our darker spot color. So that was 13 and then 14. And then our next spot isn't until 18. So if you want to count, this was 14, we know that. So this next one's going to be 15, 16, 17. And then we know this next one's 18, but if you lost count, it's just the first one of the next like darker patch. You can see the darker loops there. And that one's going to be um, in our spot color. 
and it's just going to be the next two loops. So we'll just do two stitches in the darker color. And then, so we know that this is 18, 19. So this one's going to be 20. And our next two spots are on 22 and 23. So this is 20, 21. So then this next one's going to be 22, 23. And those two are going to be in our darker color. Like I said, if the counting thing confuses you, basically we just did two single stitches. And then the next two will be our our spot color so the next two and I'll recap at the end if you want to see and make sure you did everything correctly but if I'm being completely honest if your spots are off on your cow no one's gonna notice because they're just cow spots and honestly on my two cows I made they have completely different spots but they still both look adorable so it's fine anyways once you get to your c-clip you'll make a stitch on the one that has a c-clip and you're gonna move it up so if we count it around, we should still be at 24 loops, but I'm not going to count because if I count every time, I'm going to not count correctly and then have to count off camera. It'll be a whole thing. That's my point. So I'm just going to kind of show you where this, we did the spots for this row. So there was like one that's like down here. There's one on the side and then there's one at the very end right here. If you want to see what exact loops they're on, again, you can check the description, but you can just count to make sure you put them on the right ones. So like if I counted all these, I know this would be 13, 14, then we have like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And if you look in the, if you look in the pattern, you'll see that I have the, the spots go on those exact loops. Makes sense. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it makes sense. Um, okay. So we're going to have to do four single stitches and then our first um, spot for, t for row two is going to be on the fifth and sixth. Again, if the spot thing confuses you, don't worry, I'm walking you through it, but I know it can be a little crazy and confusing if you're a beginner, so I'm going to try my best to like walk you through it. So this one's going to be one, and like I said, if you don't want to do the counting thing, basically we're just going to do four single stitches and then we'll have our first spot. So that's our first single stitch, the one with the C-clip on it. We go two, three, four. And then once you've done four single stitches, you can tell because we have the one with the C-clip on it, and then two, three, four. The next two will be in our spot color. We'll just do two in our spot color. This is five. So we have two in our spot color. Now we're gonna do three single stitches in our light pink. So one, two, three. And I know I'm in the right spot because we know this one was 6, so we have 7, 8, 9. And the next spots are on 11 and 12. No, 11. <laughs> 10, 11. Because um, this was 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, 11 is going to be in our spot color. So we're going to do two stitches again in our darker color. And then pretty much this whole section until we get to this very last, like, darker spot over here. So this whole bit is all in our lighter color. So this whole section until you get to, literally they're gonna be in the same spot as last time. So just these, that little set of dark loops right there, we're gonna do dark stitches, like the darker color, the spot color <laughs> on those two stitches again. But basically all of this is gonna be light pink until then. So yeah. And I'll pick up bands and get back to my story of moving in college, um, because it's repetitive. And, you know, just feeling silence. I don't know. Because, <laughs> see, it's always, I, I just like to talk about random things when we have repetitive bits. Because, I don't know, if you're looming with me, I guess it gives you something to listen to. I, what is my, I don't know. Lots of thoughts. Um, but yeah, I moved again. So it was kind of an insane, like, coming back to school. Because it was like, I got here, I think my family left me the day before school started. And then I was just, like, unpacking quickly before classes started. And then classes started and they went well. Um, I like all my classes, so that's good. It's a little overwhelming because basically I'm a studio art major, so we have to take studio classes. And if you don't know what studio classes are, basically they're like, they're more work than regular classes is how I feel they are because 
the classes for one are three hours long so like my painting class is three hours long my ceramics class is three hours long so all my I'm taking four classes a semester which is like full-time in college and like I'm at the school um, for basically six hours every day and I'm only taking four classes so it's quite interesting so it was kind of a little bit of an adjustment to taking because last semester I only took two studio classes and then my other classes were like regular classes so like an hour to an hour and a half and now it's like I'm like at the school double the time I was last semester so it was an interesting adjustment also studio classes just tend to be more work so I was adjusting but then on top of that I get here and they're like oh yeah by the way there's a student show in like two weeks and I was like what? <laughs> so there's like an art show that obviously all students can enter so I was working on my pieces for the student show which is now past the deadline to enter and I entered so it was just like a lot of things happened when I first came here but I am at those two darker loops so we're gonna do two um, stitches in our spot color on these loops so basically you just match the color I don't know <laughs> but yeah so it was just like a lot of things right away I feel like when I got here so it took me a while to adjust and luckily I mean you guys haven't seen like a huge gap in videos because I did film the Yeti tutorial right before I left so I was able to post it and it's kind of made me look like I'm still active even though I've kind of just been like swamped completely with school um but yeah so I, I'm enjoying college but it's just like that's where I've been because I really wanted to enter the art show with like something good so I was putting a lot of effort into my first painting and my first painting didn't turn out perfect, but I did enter the student show and we'll see if I get in. Um, basically, the student show is just like an art show for students and we get to be like in the little gallery here on campus. Um, so yeah, it'd be fun, but... Anyways, that was row two, so we're halfway done with our single rows. Um, here's kind of where we put the spots for this row, so we have the two right here towards the end. We have the two there at the start, and then we have these two in like the middle here, and then just like a bunch. And yeah, we should still be at 24 loops. I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to pick up some bands. So for the next row, um, like I said, always check the pattern description if you want to see where the spots are. But the first spots actually for this row are going to be right away on the first two um, stitches we do. So yeah, I'm just picking up some bands. And also drinking water. I hate that this camera, that my new camera doesn't have a pause button like my phone does. Because now like whenever I drink water, you guys get to hear the lovely pause while I drink. <laughs> But yeah, trying to stay hydrated and not die. Also because like just talking a lot is fun. <laughs> My voice gets tired. But yeah. So this is um, the first loop. So this is one. And our first spot's going to go on the second and third loop. So the first two right here. We're going to put our spot. We have a spot on the first two loops and on this next one here I'm sorry I'm tricking my pattern <laughs> on this next one here we're just gonna do a single stitch hmm. I'm sorry I'm ke I keep checking my pattern because I'm like is past me correct but we're gonna trust her but on then on these next two loops we're gonna do two dark stitches again so we basically only have one stitch in between so we have our one lighter color and then these next two are gonna be in our darker color. And I'm sorry if the lighting's a bit weird. Hoping it looks okay. So I'll recap what we did real quick. Because I know that was a lot. So we have our first stitch that's in light pink, then the next two are in our darker spot color, then we have one stitch in light pink, and then the next two in our darker color. And now we're going to do a few in our lighter color. So we have this one, and this one, hold up, sorry, I'm counting while we're doing this. So this is six, uh, basically our next darker color are going to be on nine and ten. So I'm just making sure I'm in the right spot. So this is this was six, seven, eight. The next three stitches are going to be in our light pink. So we did two stitches from where we last had a dark stitch or like a dark spot. And now we're gonna do three stitches in, oh my God, my camera nearly fell. Beep. 
Okay, we're good. We're good. But basically these next three stitches are going to be in. And I'm adjusting my light again, don't mind me. But the next three stitches are gonna be in a darker color. Then we're gonna do three stitches, I believe. Yeah, we're gonna do three stitches in light pink and then we're gonna do another spot. So we're gonna do two. So we just did three stitches from where our last dark spot was. We did one, two, three, and now we're gonna do two stitches in our darker color again. Make sure you don't skip any loops. I just nearly skipped a loop, so we have one, two. And then basically now, once again, we're just gonna go for a little bit until we get to like the end here. So like this end spot again. This is all gonna be light pink again. So we're just gonna do that. Keep checking to make sure I'm doing everything correctly, but I think we just need to trust the pattern and trust past me who wrote the pattern. <laughs> I'm just like, is this correct? But yeah, it has to be. I mean, I wrote, it, I wrote, I wrote it down correctly. I know I did. I just, I don't know why I never trust my own patterns. But yeah. I'm trying to think what else I could tell you about about school, but it's been good. I'm having fun. Um, the only thing is like, I don't know, my allergies decided to hit me out of nowhere. I think if you've been watching my tutorials for a while, I've occasionally mentioned I have sinus issues. Like, I don't know what it is, but my whole family, we got awful allergies. So it's like, just like in our genes, inherited. We just die during allergy season, my whole family collectively. So out of nowhere, like <laughs> this past like two weeks, I've just kind of low-key been dying from my allergies, which is fine, kind of, sort of. Um, but basically on this first dark loop here, we're gonna do one stitch in our darker color. And then the rest of the way is going to be in our lighter color until we get to the C-clip. So we just do this one on the first dark loop in the darker color. But yeah, so it's just been also like, that's why it's also been like, I haven't had a chance to film because like I've had this pattern written down for probably a week. No, two weeks now. But it's just also been, I've been low key dying of allergies. And because I was like, I had to skip school one day because my allergies were that bad where I just like, I was just like, I need to just like go sleep or something because I just, I did not feel well. And the worst part was it was allergies. So it was like, I can't really do anything either. I kind of just got to like wait it out. Um, so I got a little bit behind in school because of my allergies as well. So then I spent time catching up. Luckily I didn't get too behind, like nothing was late, but it was also just like annoying having to catch up like when you miss in like one day of class. But yeah, anyways, that was row three. You know, I said we're doing four rows. We're actually doing five. Oh no, I can't count. Um, we're doing five rows. So we still have two more rows of single stitches, but that was row three. And you can see we have a spot here, 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 and here. And if you want to count to make sure you put all your spots in the right place, the numbers for that are down in the description below. I'm not going to do it because then this tutorial would be even more ridiculously long than it already is. Uh, I kind of know that this tutorial is going to be a bit of a long one just because it's a big cow and it's a lot of rows. Okay. So I did kind of mess up. Um, it was 100% my bad. It shouldn't affect the pattern too much. I'm gonna leave the pattern. So, okay, if you're following along with the pattern description, it wasn't matching up to what I was saying. This is kind of why I told you where to put them somewhat correctly, but I kind of counted wrong. And if you put them exactly where I did, your spots are still gonna look fine. I looked at my cow and I'm like, he still looks fine. I'm not gonna fix it. But the one place where I messed up, was I accidentally did an increase on this first stitch here instead of doing two and three as like different colors so then everything was off back one by one stitch and I could fix the tutorial but because of how long this cow tutorial is and how much time I have tonight to film this tutorial I'm gonna leave it and the cow spots are gonna look good no matter what so if you're like screaming don't it, I look it's gonna still look fine and the next rows are not gonna be confusing Literally, the only thing it's gonna affect is this first spot here, and I'm gonna adjust it for the tutorial. Well, actually, I'm not even gonna adjust it. I'm just gonna leave it. It's just gonna be slightly smaller than it should have been, but it's not a big deal. 
So this first one for row four is actually supposed to be in our darker color. So I'm gonna undo this first stitch here with a C clip on it and redo it in our darker color. But yeah, I kind of messed up and accidentally increased, um, which is why it's good to count at the end of every row. I know I'm always kind of cocky, like, I know I did it right, but that's like a joke for tutorials. Um, but yeah, count at the end of every row and make sure you don't accidentally increase anywhere, because I did. And now I'm having to fix it. Luckily, there's not really anything to fix, just basically that one row is going to be off for us, and if you were following along the tutorial. But I can guarantee you, your cow spots are still going to look fine. You'll see when I finish this cow, you can fast forward to the end and look at my cow spots and decide if you need to, like, fix the last row. But personally, I am going to leave it. The spots honestly look good no matter what, so I'm not too worried. Okay, so we flipped this first stitch, the one with our seagull bonnet, to a darker color. This second stitch is going to be in a darker color as well. And then... Right, yeah, and then basically, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the wrong one. Okay, so basically, this whole section here until we get to the second dark section of dark pink. So, this first one, we're not going to do anything on. This is all going to be light pink. We get to the second section here, we are going to do a stitch, but we're just going to do light pink until then. So, I'm just going to do those stitches. Yeah, maybe that's what tutorials at night I mess up. <laughs> It honestly wasn't a big mistake though. It's it's not a, it's not gonna affect anything. But it was just collar placement, which is so tricky. But luckily it's with something like the cow spots, because I know if like say this was like a miraculous Tsum Tsum design and I messed up the color placement on like say the mask or something, or even like their little outfits, it would have like affected everything. But because it's just cow spots, I'm like, it's fine. They're supposed to look just like cow spots. <laughs> Anyways. So I'm going to make sure I'm at the ninth loop, because on the ninth we're going to do a stitch in a darker color, but I'm just going to count to make sure I'm in the right spot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold up. One, two, one, two three, four, five, six, seven. So we're on the seventh barely, so I need to do two more stitches, and then the last one will be in our darker color. So that's two. And then this last one here is going to be in our darker color. So the ninth stitch will be in our darker color. And then we're just going to go until we get to this section here. And I'm just making sure. So we're going to stop one before this one. So this is nine, so it's going to be 10, 11, 12. I cannot count. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we're fine. Um, so we're going to go up until this last dark loop here. So that's going to be four single stitches. So we're just going to do four single stitches in the lighter color. So one, two, three, four. So we did four stitches in our lighter color. So we know this one was nine. So we're going to go, this is nine. So it's going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14, 15 right here. So this dark loop and then the one after it, we're going to do in our darker color. So if you didn't mess up on the last row, it's worth noting that your dark spots are not going to be in the same place as mine. I completely messed up. Um, so just a note that if you're like, well, my dark spot, like dark loop is not in the same spot as yours. It's because you probably did it correctly and I messed up. I'm going to leave it correctly done in the pattern in the description. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I already said that, but I have to let you know. No. And then the rest of the way here is just all gonna be in light pink loops. So just your lighter color. We're just gonna go the rest of the way in our lighter color. Yeah, I kind of can't believe I messed up, but looking at my cow's spots, he's still going to look adorable, so I'm not worried about it. Like, he still looks so cute. Spots are okay. He's going to live, but I can't, I kind of can't believe I've messed up, because I don't think I've ever messed up kind of the color placement that bad and left it in a tutorial, but, um, we're leaving it. It's fine. The cow's going to live. Everything will be okay. Am I saying this for you or me? We'll never know. <laughs> 
You know what's kind of not fun though? Um, I feel like you guys noticed this because I love painting my nails. I always have them painted so fun in all my tutorials, but they're completely naked right now. Um, it's because I work in food. I work at the dining center on my on campus and they don't let us wear nail polish. So most of my tutorials while I'm in school, I might have naked nails because I just, I can't wear polish. Well, I mean, I could remove it before work, but like it's Sunday, I literally work tomorrow. So it's like, it's pointless to paint my nails for a couple hours and then you gotta wait for it to dry. I didn't have the effort, but yeah. So that was that row. We put some spots down here, one right there, and then two right here at the start. So this is our final row of spot placement. Well, not spot placement, but spot placement with single stitches before we get into the legs. And the leg spot placement's fun. Just forewarning you now, we're doing legs plus placing spots. There's just a lot going on, but we'll do it. I hope those of you who are more beginner are following along okay with this. I'm trying my best to explain. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully your cow is thriving. I hope so. <laughs> Anyways, we're not going to do anything on this first one here. So we're going to do five single stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're just going to double check to make sure we didn't accidentally go too far. I think I may have accidentally actually went too far. Um, so we're doing five single stitches and the C-clip was our first one. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So once you've been done five single stitches, these next two, we're going to do in a darker color. So one, and then two. Sorry, I just need to adjust my light, it's annoying me. You know, I probably shouldn't be adjusting my light that much because I can like fix it in color correction later. <laughs> but I just keep looking at my tutorial and I'm like, oh, the light is not right. Okay, and then we're gonna do a bunch of single stitches until we get to like the end over here-ish. So I would say I wouldn't start counting until you get past these two dark spots. So we're just gonna do a bunch of single stitches through these dark two, and then I'll tell you what to do. But all these are just gonna be up until you get to like right here with the second, where we put the second dark spot. Just single stitches in light pink. And I need to pick up more pants. I feel like every time there's color placement in a tutorial, I'm always like, I really hope they're understanding what I'm saying. I don't know why, but whenever like in the moment when I'm filming, I feel like I'm explaining so bad, but then I'll look back at the footage and I'm like, no, I actually did a good job. But for some reason, like in the moment, whenever I'm filming this, I'm like, I am the most confusing person on earth. No one understands this, but then I look back and I'm not as bad as I think, but yeah, yeah, fun times. So like, I don't know what it's been lately. This is a bit of a personal thing, but I, like my confidence lately has been awful. I didn't notice until the other day, but I have been, I have like no confidence lately. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with me? Cause usually, I mean, I'm not the most confident person on the planet, but I usually at least have some confidence, but I don't know what it is lately. But I was, I don't know. I just realized the other day, I'm like, why am I like, I, I don't know. I seem to have lost my confidence. I need to get it back. But it's been, it's been a weird time and I have, I don't know, it's just been weird. But I've been better, so. Anyways, we're gonna count to make sure we're at about like the 16th loop, I think we are. So we're gonna start by counting the one on our C-clip. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we are on the 16th loop, we just did the 16th stitch. So on the 17th and 18th, we're gonna flip to our darker color. Like that. And then I'm gonna do three single stitches. So actually no, we only do two single stitches. So we're gonna do two single stitches after we did these dark two, and we're gonna do two more dark spots. So two more dark stitches. 
or I don't know why I keep calling them dark, like two more, two more stitches in our spot color. Cause you could be doing a reverse cow. You could be like flipping the lights and darks. I don't know why I keep saying dark. I guess I, I, I said this earlier. I should be saying spot color. And then once you do those last two spots, it's just um, light pink the rest of the way. Like that. And then once you get to the one with the C-clip on it, you're just gonna make a stitch and move it up. Okay, so I took a bit of a break, but of course it was like two seconds, not even a second for you, but um, we're gonna do the legs. So the legs kind of confused everyone the last time of this cow for the first time, but I'm gonna try my best to explain and we should be good. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading what I wrote. Okay, cool. So the way I kind of like to think about this, also you shouldn't have taken your hook out, I just took it out out of habit. Um, so we finished the five rows of single stitches. If you didn't stay with us to do the five rows and you did your own version of the spot that's, or you followed the pattern, that's fine. But if you're back for the legs, hi. Um, but you should still be at 24 loops. So if you count around, you should still be at 24. So we're gonna count real quick. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. My camera's going blurry on me. Let's redo that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I did not count right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I cannot count on camera because that's already wrong. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So I have 24 still. I just can't count. So the way I like to think about this is if you do 24 divided by four, you'll get six loops. Well, six. So you kind of do some math and then you get that you use six loops per leg. Um, I also need to drink water, I'm about to choke. Oh. But basically, after you, um. Kind of think of it like that. We have 24 loops, we need four legs. So we're gonna do six loops per leg. And that's how it's kind of gonna work. So we're still adding spots here and there. Um, okay, so we're still adding a little bit of spots. It's not too bad. So this one is gonna be our first stitch. So we go one, this one's gonna be two. And then the third and the fourth are gonna be in our darker color. So three, four, and then five. So we just did five single stitches and I'll count backwards just to show you. So we have the C clips, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then on this sixth loop, our final loop for this leg, we're gonna chain up three. So we're gonna pull this band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, that's one. Do that again, pull the band through everything on our hook, both ends back on our hook, two, one more time, three. So we just chained up three. And now, instead of keeping going, we're gonna turn. So we're gonna, we're facing this way, we're gonna turn around. We're gonna go in through this um, loop that has a C-clip on it, and we're gonna make a stitch. Um, we're gonna pull this band through everything on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one. And then we're gonna take our C-clip off that loop and move it up onto the loop that is on our hook. Like that. So now you should technically have eight loops because these two these are gonna be three chains. We have one, two, three, then we have four, five, six, seven, and then this one, wait. How many loops should we have? We should have eight. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should have eight. It's kind of hard to see. You can see I got one, two, three. This one's always, you're nearly gonna lose it. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. So that's for the first weird bit. Now we're gonna do one row normal around this. Um, we're actually doing two rows normal around this, sorry. I'm just looking at my pattern. Don't mind me. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm adding the spots in the right places. So these first two, well, this is our first loop, but the next two, we're gonna do our darker color. So you're gonna get your darker color. And the next two single stitches are gonna be a darker color. And then the rest of the way, 
is single stitches in our lighter color, I guess. And you're just going to do single stitches on everything. Even these weird chains we made, I know it gets confusing, because after you finish, like, doing the single stitches on all the loops, you get to, like, these weird chain things, and I think that's kind of what confused everyone. Oh my god, I'm sorry. My thing is just unlooping, so I gotta re-loop it. But I think that's what confused everyone last time, was, like, the chains. But you're just gonna do single stitches on the chains, and use them, like, as if they were a loop. So I know that might sound confusing, but give me a second if I could stop dropping all my bands. But there's three chains in the back here. Make sure you don't miss any loops. That's probably the most important. It's very easy to miss loops on this first round. So just don't miss anything. And you're going to go through this chain here. And you kind of just go through this like inner part. It doesn't matter really which one because I've sometimes twisted the chain. It still looks fine. And you're just going to make a stitch on them. So just make sure you do stitches on the chains. We kind of go on this like top bit here. But honestly, if you twist the chain a little bit, it's not the biggest deal. And you're only kind of going through the top half of it, as you can see as I'm doing. And then once you get a C-clip, you make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. So now if we count around eight, it'll be a little easier to count. So we'll start by counting this one on our hook. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. So we're gonna do one more more we're gonna do one more row normal of single stitches. Um, this time we're not doing any spots on this one, so it's just solid light pink. It's a very easy row. And believe it or not, we're already almost done with our first leg. Once you get to the legs, I feel like it goes kind of quickly. So once again, we're just doing another row of single stitches in light pink. There's no spots on this one, so it's just all entirely light pink. Okay. Then you'll just make a stitch on the- ooh, okay, <laughs> I nearly messed up. So once you get to the one that has a C-clip on it, you're gonna switch colors to our darker color. So you're gonna want to get whatever your darker color is, or whatever color you want for the hooves. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same color as you did the spots. I've done cows where they have had different color hooves than the spots, but for this guy, I'm keeping it the same. I'm making like a solid pink cow, <laughs> so I'm just gonna use my pink bands. So on this first loop here, so this is the one with the C-clip on it, by the way. I just nearly did it without switching colors, but we're going to slip stitch colors this time. So we're going to pull this band through everything on our hook and then put the back one over the front one. And then we'll put our C-clip on this one. So it should have been the one that already had the C-clip on it. I just kind of took my C-clip out on accident, just in case you're confused. But um, yeah. So that's that. And now we're just going to go the rest of the way. Um, we've switched to our darker color now and we're going to do one more row normal or one more row of single stitches in our darker color or whatever color you want your hoof to be. Are they hooves on cows? Hooves? Do cows have hooves? They do, right? Or cow, cow feet? I don't know. <laughs> What's proper cow terminology? I have no idea. I was debating if I should finish filming this tutorial or tonight or not because I was like, maybe I should just like come back tomorrow and finish it. But I don't know. I don't think that's going to work because I work until late tomorrow. But also, my voice does not feel the greatest, so we'll see what I end up deciding to do. But I think I can power through and finish for tonight, so hopefully I can. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. I'm also really hoping that this tutorial looks okay. By the way, guys, if you've watched a lot of my tutorials, let me know how the lighting and everything is or if it looks okay. 
or if I need to like fix anything for next time because I think I am going to have to start filming tutorials at night. So that was one row normal in our hoof color and now we're just going to close it up. So we're going to be decreasing everything until it's closed and we haven't done any decreases at this point so I'm going to show you what a decrease is. But basically all it decreases is you're going to grab the inside part of one loop and then the back part of the next loop and then you just make a stitch. So I'll show you that again. Grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. We can take our C-clip out at this point. We're just going to keep doing that. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. Inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. And I actually think this is my final decrease. So once you have the last decrease you can possibly do up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook and then push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you're just going to come up through the leg, come out, and then just pull the tail inside and just hide it. Like that. So we're just going to repeat those same steps for all the other legs. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be it. Okay, so we need to do the rest of the legs. Um, but it's basically the exact same steps and we just repeat it for all the legs. The spots are a little bit different, so I am gonna stay on camera and do all the legs with you, but it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, I'm just checking, I was just checking my pattern, but we're good. So I'm gonna show you how to do the next leg, and it's gonna start the same, so we're just gonna come up, to, we're just gonna come to the next stitch we haven't used. So you can see that there's like a stitch on this one here. So we're going to come to the stitch right after that. <clears throat> Sorry. And we're going to make a stitch. And on this first stitch here, just so we don't lose it, we're going to put a C-clip on it. Like that. And then, like I said, still remember, keep in mind, we're using six loops per leg. So this is our first loop. Two. Three. And then on this fourth loop here, we're going to put a spot, so we're going to switch to our darker color. So on the next two, we're going to do darker colors, so that's the fourth, fifth. And then on this sixth loop here, so our final loop for this leg, because we use six loops per leg, we're going to chain up three. So we go one, two, and three. And then we're facing this way, we're going to turn and we're going to go back through this first loop here with our C-clip on it. We're going to make a single stitch. And remember, this single stitch, because it's like kind of an odd one because we got this weird chain, we're going to pull it through everything and then push the back one over the front one. Ah, if I didn't let everything go, oh no. Sorry, I just accidentally undid my entire chain. I don't know why. I think it's just how I loom lately. I keep accidentally pulling my hook out. Even when I loom off camera, I'm just like, I don't know if I go so fast. It sounds like, I don't know. But I just keep pulling my hook out on accident. But there we go. And this should be eight loops. It's a little confusing right now. Um, but if we can, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Did I count right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you should have eight. And we're gonna do another row of single stitches around this. Um, we're gonna put our spot color in the exact same spots. So basically when you get to these two loops that are in the darker color, you're gonna do them in the darker color again. This row's per this leg's spots are pretty easy. So we'll just do single stitches in our light pink until we get to those dark pink loops. Trying to really make sure my camera's focused. I feel like the lighting's still so weird. Um, and once you get to these dark pink loops, you're just gonna do single stitches in the darker color on those loops. And make sure you don't skip any loops here. And then once you get to the chains, once again, you're just gonna go through them. Um, you can kind of see how I do this. This first chain's always the worst. 
and then after that it gets easier and just make sure you're only going through that chain and just go through part of it I usually just go through like the top half so you can see like that you just make a stitch on it and <laughs> once again I've dropped the loops oh my god So if there's an odd cut here, it's because I kind of messed up and forgot a whole row. Once again, this is why we do not film tutorials at night, but it's going to be an adjustment. <laughs> Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, which isn't on the band for me, sh it's, it just pretends it's there. You're just going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. And we're going to do one more row, just solid pink, solid light pink. So we're just going to do a whole row in light pink all the way around until we get to the C-clip. And yeah, we're almost done with this leg. Also, I'm seriously sorry if there was an odd cut there. I did mess up and forgot this row. But through the magic of editing, you won't see that mistake. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I finished the leg and then I looked at it and I'm like, that's significantly shorter than the other one. And I was like, oops. Um, but it's an easy fix for me. I just, I was laughing because I was like, I really, I got thrown off. I gave him a baby cow leg instead of a big cow leg. I feel like that's what it was because like I have the baby cow pattern memorized because I've made like so many cows for my Etsy shop and I was like yeah that's totally the step and then I was like there's another row I just forgot. Anyways once you go around once with just all light pink when you get to the c-clip you're gonna switch to your darker pink so you're just gonna get your darker pink color pull it through everything on your hook and then push the back one over the front one and then you'll just move your c-clip up onto this band like that and now we're going to do one final row of single stitches in our darker color and then all we have to do is close this leg up I feel like the legs really do get repetitive after a while, but it's kind of hard to avoid because it's just how they are. But I am going to stay on and do all the legs on camera with you so you can do all the spots and everything. Um, but I think I am going to start going a little faster just so this tutorial isn't ridiculously long. So I'm going to, after this leg, I'm going to focus a lot on the spot placement and not so much on like what we're doing because it does get kind of repetitive and hopefully you kind of know how to make the legs by now. So we're going to take our C-clip out at this point once you get to the C-clip. Oh man, I tossed the C-clip for effect but I really tossed it. <laughs> Do I have another C-clip on my desk? Um, I'll find one right now. But now we're just going to decrease everything until closed. So if you forgot what a decrease is, grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and then make a stitch. And then we just do that all the way around. So you grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, a stitch and we just keep doing that all the way around until we can't until we can't decrease anymore and I think the next decrease for me is gonna be my last one so once you have the final decrease you can do up on your hook you're just gonna take a band pull it through everything on your hook push the back one over the front one and pull tight and then you're gonna come up to the bottom of the leg here and then just pull the tail into the leg to hide it and now that is a good size regular cow leg. So, you should be looking at something like this. Half with legs, half without legs. So we need to do the other two legs and I'm grabbing my C-clip. Okay, I got a C-clip. It's a different C-clip, but it works. So we're gonna do the final two legs. I think you kind of get what we're doing for the legs now. So I'm gonna move a little faster for the legs just cause this tutorial I know is gonna be ridiculously long, so. So it's not any ridiculously longer. Um, I'm gonna move quicker on the legs. Um, remember you can pause, so like after I complete a row you can pause, do the steps for yourself, and then unpause, see what to do next. Cause <laughs> we still got two more legs to go and I'm just gonna move quicker. I'm gonna mention the steps we're doing but I'm not gonna explain them as much. And I'm just gonna kind of explain where to place the collars. Hmm. Interesting. Oh I see. Okay, so once again, 
we're gonna do our next six loops. So we're gonna go forward six. So we're only gonna do go forward four. And remember on this first one to put your C clip so you know where you started. And make sure that you're on the first um, you're on the first stitch so you didn't skip any. That's where that one ended. So this is where we start this leg. And we're gonna do four stitches just forward in light pink. And then once you get to the fifth one here, we're gonna switch over to our darker pink color or our spot color. So we're gonna switch over to our darker pink. So that was five single stitches, so one, two, three, four, five. So now we're gonna chain up three. And the first two chains of the chain of three are gonna be in our darker pink. And the final one will be in lighter pink. And then we're going to turn, go back through our C-clip, pull it through everything, move your C-clip up, and that's the first bit. So now for the second row, we're going to be putting our um, dark bands on the exact same two. So when we get to these dark stitches over here, so these first four stitches are just going to be in light pink. And remember, you can pause at any time, because <laughs> I know I loom quick. So once you get to this darker loop, we're going to switch back to our darker color, and the next two stitches are going to be in our darker color. So one, two. And make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm noticing I do find that with this first chain here, it's a little easier to go through it if you kind of pull on it a bit. And then you can see where it is better and then put your hook through. Just a tip. And then after you do those two stitches in the darker color, the rest of the way is just light pink. And then once you get to this piece here, once you get to the C-clip, you're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up like that and you should still be at eight loops at this point you can count if you want I'm gonna keep going so we need to do one final row of single stitches in all light pink so we're gonna do that just picking up a few more bands and we're just gonna do this final row in all light pink You know, I really should have used, I know I already probably mentioned this, but better contrasting colors. The pinks are really just kind of blending into each other. Isn't it a thing that certain people are like more colorblind to like certain colors? Oh my god, if anyone who's like not that great at seeing pink watches this tutorial, they're gonna be struggling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea, but it's proving to have not been a good idea. I should have, I should have made a different color cow, but it's too late now. Okay, and then once you get to the one with the C-clip on it for this row, once again, remember, we're going to switch to dark pink once you get to the one with the C-clip, so you'll pull that band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one, move your C-clip up, and now we're going to do one row normal in our darker color. As you can see, now with the legs, I'm moving pretty fast, just because... The legs are so repetitive. You know, I really want to make an apricot cow. At least I've been kind of thinking in, in, of it in my head as an apricot cow, like an orangey one. That's like light pastel orange with like darker orange. I think it would be so cute. I think I made a mini cow like that one time. Um, but I sold it in my Etsy shop. <laughs> but it was so cute and I feel like a big cow like that would be adorable. So I think even though I would have made all the cows like for the tutorial and about, I might make another cow that's like an apricot cow. At least I'm going to think of him as an apricot cow. So, yeah, just just something I want to do. And it's funny because I was going to make the orange cow in this video, but then I was like, no. I should do a Valentine's Day cow. Pink on pink. Great color combo. 
I really, I didn't think it wasn't gonna appear on camera well, but it's, it's not. Hopefully when I color corrected, you guys are gonna be like, I can see the difference, but right now when I'm filming it, it's really hard to see the difference, so, yeah. So that was our last row of single stitches. Um, we're gonna close it up now, so we're just gonna decrease everything till closed. And then this leg will be done and we only have one leg left. And then we almost have our cow body. I feel like the cow body takes the longest. I think the head's gonna go pretty quick. And then, yeah, the cow comes together really quickly after we have the head done, so that's exciting. Also, you can remove your C-clip at this point. And I won't violently flick the C-clip this time so we don't lose another one. And then once you have the final decrease up on your hook, you're just gonna pull the band through everything, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you come to the bottom here, and you're just gonna hide the tail into the leg. I'm just gonna pull it in. Like that. Three legs now, so we got one to go. And you should have six loops left at this point. You have one, two, three. How do I have seven? One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Huh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. How did that happen? One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I must have accidentally increased somewhere because I have seven here. So what I'm gonna do to fix this um, is I'm just gonna decrease on this very on one of these here just so I don't have seven. Um, I don't know how that happened. I must have accidentally increased somewhere because if you have, you should have had 24 loops and if you had 24 loops, you should have had exactly six loops right now. Apparently looming at night, I make a lot of mistakes because um, I have 27 somehow. Well, not 27, I have 25 and I have seven loops left. So I'm just gonna decrease like the one before we do the chain up thing just to fix it so I have the correct amount of loops. If you have exactly six loops, ignore my one random decrease because you should be correct. I just must have accidentally increased somewhere. It is easier to accidentally increase on bigger designs. The good thing is because it is bigger, like you don't see it as much, like no one's gonna know I accidentally had one extra stitch. Anyways, we're gonna do one single stitch in our light pink and we'll put our C clip on this one. Two. So after you do two single stitches, this one here is gonna, the next two are gonna be in our spot color. And then this is gonna be our last spot for the body of the cow. So the rest of the way, we're just doing light pink and it's gonna be real easy. But that's our last spot. So we just do those two. And then the rest of the way would just be in light pink. And I'm gonna decrease here because I accidentally have an extra loop, but you should not have an extra loop if you did this correctly, I kinda messed up. Okay. And then once you get to the six, you're gonna chain up three. One, two. And three. And then once again, we'll flip directions. Go through the C-clip here. Flip it up. And now we're just gonna do two rows of single stitches in solid light pink. And I'm gonna do these really quickly. I'm gonna loom with speed, even though my speedy looming apparently doesn't help because I accidentally increased somewhere. I don't even know where I accidentally increased. You know what it could be too, because like, I could have just accidentally increased, because sometimes like the camera's in the way and I can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna blame the camera. I'm gonna blame the camera for my mistakes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny though, cause like Valentine's Day is this week and like I've already seen so many people doing Valentine's Day party, Valentine's Day things, like you see all the people on dates, you know, around. Um, but it was funny cause yesterday I went to the studio um, cause I walked to the art building and I was going to walk to the art building and I walk right out of my apartment, like the complex, like the apartment complex and like across the street, there's a bunch of just houses. And at this frat house, there was just a massive Valentine's Day party. And I literally just walked out of the door into this and I was like, oh my god. And I just kept walking. But yeah, it was like a giant Valentine's Day like frat party. And I'm like, 
I, I'm not one to go to parties, so I've never even seen a college party until this point because I feel like it's obvious. I'm a bit of a nerd. I, I live at the art building and I paint, but I never really go to parties. So I like saw this party. I was just like, nope. And I just kept walking, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that was one row. We have to do two. So I'm going to do the second row in light pink. But yeah, I just thought it was funny and then I texted my mom because my mom's always asking me like Because my mom we always joked that she had like the crazy college dating life because she she went on so many dates for one She went to parties and all that and I I don't do any of that I'm like I'd much rather sit at home with my loom bands or draw or something else I don't really want to go to parties and like I don't know get drunk. Is that what college kids do? <laughs> I assume that's what happens at parties. I mean like, it probably does. It was funny because I went to the store today and I was walking home. Well, I I was at the art studio and then I went to the store and then I was walking home and I passed these girls and they're like talking to each other and they're like, oh my god, do I look drunk? And I was like, people really be partying because supposedly my school is a big party school. Like a lot of parties happen. I just, I apparently, I apparently one, hang out with a group of people that never go to parties and also... I just, I don't know. I didn't know we actually had parties at the school, but apparently they exist somewhere. I just do not attend those parties. <laughs> I mean, it's cool if you want to live that life in college. It's just not for me. But I just thought it was funny because I literally never heard of any college parties up until like this semester, like this past week, and then you just see all these parties and I'm like, wow, it's not a myth. They actually do exist. <laughs> but yeah. So we're gonna switch to our dark pink color and then move our C-clip up and then we're gonna do our one row normal in dark pink or whatever color you have for your hoofs. Hooves, hooves, whatever. But yeah. You know, it's kinda like so hard to imagine myself ever going to a college party just because of like how I am as a person. <laughs> and like no hate if you like the college party life, good for you. But um, it's really just not for me. I'm a massive introvert and yeah, I'm just, like going somewhere and just socializing with people I don't know. It's not my ideal afternoon. But I just, it's just so funny to me because I literally thought they were like a myth. Like no one actually has parties like that. But apparently they exist, so I don't know. I don't know what you're going to take from this, but it's a thing. I don't know. Should I be living the typical college life and, I don't know, partying? My mom thinks I should. Well, not she doesn't think I should, but she always like jokingly texts me, like I said, if I'm out at parties and all this, and I'm like, girl, you know I'm sitting home alone, looming or doing clay. Even though I do go out with my friends, it's just, like, we don't do that either, so, yeah. Anyways, now I'm just going to decrease everything until closed, and then we will have our final leg done. I feel like now that I was saying I just sit home alone, that sounds sad. I do go out with friends. I have friends. It's just... Like, even when I hang out with my friends, it's like four of us max. I think the biggest group I'll hang out with is if I go to my, like, Art, Ho Art History Association meeting and there's like ten of us. But, yeah, I definitely don't go to like these big parties. I hang out with friends, but not, not in that way. Okay, so we have our final leg done. And I feel like the body is always what takes the longest on this cow. <laughs> So we've done it. It's a body. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff him. So there's kind of like this big hole in the bottom. So we're just gonna stuff him full with stuffing. Um, you can use polyfill. You can use pretty much whatever you want. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. Focus. There we go. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna be using cotton balls today. I like to stuff my loom things with cotton balls. So I'm just gonna tear up some cotton balls and then stuff him. And I'll show you how to finish closing them up so you don't just have like this giant gap on the bottom of your cow. But we finished all the legs. I feel like once you finish all the legs, he goes so quickly. You know, this is a design I really want to see if you guys make it, by the way. So if you made my cow, and someone was asking recently how you share it with me, Instagram. You can DM it to me or you can just tag me in it. And sometimes I don't like them right away because of school, but I do love seeing your cows. <laughs> There's so, like, I feel like this is going to be such a cool design to see any of you make. 
It's also funny because like I did a poll on my story like does anyone want the cow tutorial but like once one person says yes to the cow tutorial I'm like I'll make it for you like I don't need a bunch of people <laughs> like as long as one person justifies me making like a cow tutorial I'm like yeah it's valid it's valid I'm gonna do it <laughs> yeah things I think about but yeah it's funny because like sometimes I'll post things on my stories and I'll be like do you guys want a tutorial for this but as long as one person says yes I'm like I'll do it for that one person but it's just, it's just funny because I was like, technically I'm already posting this design asking if you guys want a tutorial knowing I'm going to make it anyways. But I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but my cow I think is stuff. I'm debating if he needs more, he does need a little more stuffing. Eh. I'm stuffing off camera because stuffing on a camera is too much work. I think my cow's full. So once you've filled your cow with stuffing, my camera would focus. Please focus. Um, you're gonna take your lighter cow color or like whatever the lighter color is for your cow or I guess your main color. And we're gonna kind of like do chains across the bottom. So this is very similar to how I did on my tiny cow if you've made it. But we're now just doing the same thing on our bigger cow. Okay, I don't remember, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I forgot how many times we chain across, but basically we're gonna go in the middle up here. Uh, just pick a spot that's like directly in the middle. I'm gonna go right here, and I'm just gonna chain up four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, ah, four. <laughs> and then we're gonna go across here. So just directly across from where we started it and we're just gonna tie it off. So we're just gonna pull a band through everything on our hook. So we're just gonna go through one of the loops on the side. Ah, let go, no. Okay, so we're just gonna pull, we're gonna go through one of the loops on the side and then we're just gonna pull a band through everything on our hook and pull it tight. And we're gonna do the exact same thing going this way now. I just need to pick up a few more bands. So we're gonna come once again right in the middle of these legs. We're gonna chain up four. So one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna go across. We're gonna go through the middle over here. Uh, just whatever the middle looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're just gonna pull a band through everything and tie it off. And then you just hide in these two tails. Um, it's pretty easy to hide in the tails because of how big this cow is. It's like really easy to hide in the tails. So you'll just pull them into your cow. And I'm tucking the tails in off camera because... Just because. <laughs> just because. Okay. So now we have our cow's main body. And here's what my cow looks like. And we're gonna make the head next, so yeah, I'm gonna get my bands for that. Okay, so we're gonna do the head. And I'm gonna start with my darker color. I've done cows a lot of different ways, so you can see, I'm sorry, we're a little bit zoomed in and I'm gonna leave us like this, but you can see that this does not match his hoof color, but because I'm kind of just doing a two-colored cow, I'm gonna match the this color to the hoofs. But if you want this color to be lighter or a different color, this is the color you want for right now. Um, I'm using my darker color, but you can use whatever color you want. Like I said, I did a light pink here, so it doesn't have to match the hooves. But for me, it is. I'm going to use the same color. So you basically want whatever color you want for this light pink bit. And for me, that is going to be my darker pink. So I'm going to start with that. I'm so excited to put this pink cow together. He's going to look so cute. Ugh, I love this design. If you see me making a cow army, don't mind me. It's just It just has to happen. I've been kind of obsessed with this big cow design, I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. Okay. So, I'm going to start by wrapping this band three times around our hook. So one, two, three. 
And then we're gonna be putting six stitches into this. Yeah, six, six. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was six or not, so I was like, six stitches? Yeah, it's six stitches, okay. We're gonna be putting six stitches into this cap band, so we're gonna pull the band through the whole cap band, put both ends back on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one. And then we're gonna go back through the cap band. So this is the same thing as we did at the start of this tutorial, but I'm just going over it again in case you forgot. We're gonna go back through the cap band. We're gonna pull a band through just the cap band. We're gonna put both ends back on our hook. We're gonna push the back one over the front one, and then we're gonna put this loop from last time over as well. And we're just gonna repeat that same thing we just did four more times, so we have six loops in total. So we're gonna go through the cap band, pull the band through the cap band, make a stitch. So we're just putting six stitches into this cap band. Okay, like that. So now we're just gonna count to make sure we have six stitches. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we should have one, eh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And once you've made sure you have six, instead of going into the cat band, we're gonna go in through this first loop here. We're gonna pull a band through. We're gonna put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and push this loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting our C-clip on this one. I really need to dump out more dark pink bands. Okay. So, that was the first step. Um, now for the next step, we're going to be increasing everything. And this is the exact same as how we did it at the start of the tutorial. And we're still not going to be adding any spots for a while. So we're going to be in just like solid whatever color you have for like this guy's nose. I don't know. I'm going to call it his nose. <laughs> but we're increasing everything. So just like we did at the start of this tutorial. My battery flashing, hold up. Okay, so my camera battery was dying, but we're back. So like I said, we're gonna be increasing everything this row. So this one already has one stitch in it, but like we're gonna increase, so we have to go back in and do another stitch. So in case you forgot, all it increases is you do two stitches per loop and we do this all the way around. And at the end of this row, we should be at 12 loops. So yeah, we're just increasing everything. So we're just putting two stitches per loop all the way around. Oh good. <laughs> I keep accidentally snagging things. Sorry. There we go. Oh my god, what the heck happened? Okay, we're good. And once you get to the C clip, we'll make a stitch on the one that has the C clip on it. And we'll move it up. So now we're going to do one more row, um, increasing still. We're going to be increasing every third this time. And I'm going to count how many we have at the end of this row in a second. I'm just picking up bands and letting you know what we're doing next. So for the next row we're going to be increasing every third. And what that basically means is we're going to do two single stitches and then every third one we do an increase. We did this earlier in the tutorial as well. So you should somewhat know what we're doing. But after the end of the last row, we should be at 12 loops. So if we count, we should have 12. So we should have one, two, three, ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next step. Like I said, increasing every third. So this is one, this one's gonna be two. And then on this third loop here, we're gonna do an increase. So we're gonna put two stitches into this loop. And we just keep repeating that all the way around. So we have one, two, so we do two single stitches, then you do an increase. And we just keep doing this. So 
we go one, two, and then we do an increase. And you just do that one more time. One, two, increase, and then you should be at the one that has a C-clip on it. So once we get to the one that has a C-clip on it, you're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. Move it up. And now you should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you should be at 16 loops. And I need to write that down, so just give me a second. So you should be at 16 loops. And now we're going to do two rows of single stitches in our darker pink color. So just two rows normal in the nosy color, I don't know. Oh yeah. I'm just picking up a bunch of bands. Um, I am going to kind of speed through these rows because we've done so many single rows this pattern. You should hopefully know what to do. So we're just doing two rows of single stitches. Like I said, at the end of each of these two rows, you should still be at 16 loops. We're just doing one stitch per loop all the way around. And I'll stay on camera for both of these two rows, but I'm going to go pretty fast. I kind of feel bad because my sibling, um, Brad, if you know Brad, she's my sibling. And we're planning to call tonight after I finish filming this tutorial. And this tutorial has taken me a lot longer than I expected to film. I was like, yeah, I can do it in two hours. We're going on the third hour and I'm still not done. I know for you guys, it's like, this tutorial isn't three hours, but sometimes I take a few second breaks between talking and sometimes like set up, obviously to get everything ready for the tutorial and stuff takes me a little longer. So I kind of feel bad because um, my sibling bread has been waiting for me to call and I haven't called her. Because if you don't know, um, bread stayed back in my hometown to do college, whereas I went away, so we try to call at least once a week and usually weekends we call a bunch so i called her yesterday i think i called her on friday as well and we're calling again today so yeah so that was one row of single stitches if you count it around you should still be at 16 loops i'm gonna do the second row and then count so we have to do two rows total that was one row i'm gonna go ahead and do one more but yeah me and me and my sibling were like glued at the hip so it's kind of weird being away but we call all the time and honestly when we're in school like we can't miss each other too much because we're both drowning in homework so it's like even if I was at home we wouldn't really get to see each other mine is like probably an hour per night because when I'm in like school and I have all my art projects and stuff I completely like delve into them and yeah so so yeah yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to talk to Brad tonight. We've been talking because me and my sibling, we both have tickets to the Eras tour, which is insane. I know it was so hard to get tickets, but we got tickets. Um, and like in a month is our first show that we're going to in Glendale. We're hoping to go to multiple shows. It's really iffy for me if I'm going to be able to go to multiple shows because um, school and school schedules, but I'm going to try my best to go to all the shows we bought tickets for. Um, me and my sibling have been saving up for this for years, waiting for Taylor to tour again. So, luckily we are able to go to multiple nights and we were able to get tickets for multiple nights. But I am so excited to go see Taylor Swift at the Eros tour. I am a massive Swifty. And I'm just so excited. We have nosebleeds. So don't, like, we did not get floor for all nights. We're not rich. But <laughs> we're going to be in the nosebleeds. But it's going to be fun. So, I'm excited. Anyways, that was my second row of um, single stitches. And I'm at the C-clip, and I'm going to switch back to my lighter color. So we're going to switch back to our lighter pink, or whatever color it is for the main color of your cow. Because we're done with, like, the nose bit, I guess. So we're just going to slip stitch to our lighter color, move our C-clip up, and I'm just going to count real quick to make sure I still have 16 loops. So we're going to count. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we still have 16 loops. Um, and yeah, so we still have to do five more rows total 
in our lighter color. So we're still doing rows of single stitches. At the end of these five rows, we should still be at 16 loops, but we're we're gonna place some spots because he has two spots on his head. I put one here and then there's one like over here. So I'm gonna show you where to place those. I'm gonna stay on camera for all the rows. Um, but first we have to do two rows of just single stitches in pink. So we're gonna do two rows just in light pink, no spots yet. And I mentioned this earlier, but you don't have to put your spots exactly where I do, so you could put spots now. Um, but I like having a bit of divide between the like nose and the spots, so I'm gonna wait. So we're gonna do two rows of single stitches in our light pink color. And I'm gonna go pretty fast still. Ah, I keep taking my hook out. But yeah, me and um, my sibling, we've been We've been calling a lot and talking about like, cause we're going to the Taylor Swift Eras tour and it's a thing for Taylor Swift's tours if you've never been to one of hers to like dress up as like a lyric or something. And I'm not gonna tell you what lyric we're dressing up as because obviously that's top secret. I don't want anyone to steal our ideas, but we've been chatting a lot about like what we're gonna dress up as and trying to plan it and coordinate. Cause we literally have a month before we are going and I am like so, so excited. But I'm also excited because in a month um, is my spring break and I'm gonna get to take a whole week off and I'm gonna head back to my hometown. I'm gonna get to see my siblings and everything. And I'm, I'm really excited also to be reunited with my band collection, but that's like a side thing. I was joking with my sibling about that last night too because we called yesterday and I was like, you know, I'm excited to see you, but I'm also excited to see my band collection. Um, and she's like, girl, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I miss, I miss having the selection of bands I do at home. Cause like obviously I don't bring all of my bands with me because it's not practical. It's also hard to pack all that. So I only bring like I think I mainly brought I brought like the, some of the new bands I got, but I mainly brought just like the necessities. Whereas at home I've got like the collection. So I don't know. I'm excited to see my siblings, my band collection. I'm also really missing our pets lately. So that was one row of single stitches, we have to do one more, and like I said, I'm trying to really speed through these two rows, so I'm just gonna keep going. But I've been really missing our pets lately, um, I'm a huge dog person and we have a dog. We also have a cat. I love our cat. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say I'm a cat person, I think if it's cat or dogs, I choose dogs, but I love our cat, she's amazing. She's a little moody. I don't know if she likes me sometimes, because you know how cats don't always like being picked up? I do pick up our cat sometimes, and she acts like she doesn't want it. But you know how cats are, it's like, yeah, you secretly love me picking you up, so you're just in denial, but, um, but yeah, so I'm excited to see our pets too, because I missed, I miss our dog and like cats so much. I wouldn't go out, cause like both of our cat and dog, they're outside pets. Um, we bring like the dog in at night, cause obviously we don't want her to freeze and our cat has like shelter outside, but like we take care of them, but my sibling is allergic so they can't be inside but I would like go outside for at least an hour every day and just go like pet them and hang out with them so I really miss our pets I miss them so much also um, I think I've mentioned this before but we have pet turtles that live in our backyard and they hibernate in the winter so they're kind of like I mean they're they, they will I don't know they're not totally wild turtles but they're not totally pets either I mean they're pets but I guess they're somewhat wild in the fact that they hibernate, like... I don't know, I think pets turtles can hibernate, but it's like it's like a whole thing. Turtles are weird. Anyways, they've been hibernating. They usually come out around spring break time, so I'm hoping when I go home, our turtles are gonna come out as well. I miss our turtles so much. Turtles are weird. They're like... Turtles are honestly underappreciated. They have so much personality and they're so funny. I love them. <laughs> Anyways, that is my second row of single stitches. So now... We're gonna get into our third row, and this is the row where we're gonna start adding the spots. And yeah. So the first spot's gonna go on the fourth, fifth, and sixth loops. Um, I'll show you where that is, but basically we're gonna do three single stitches, then we're gonna do three stitches of the darker color, and then I'll tell you where the rest of the spots are after that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Hold up, sorry. Okay, so yeah. So we're gonna do, like I said, three stitches in our light pink color. So we're gonna do one, and then we're gonna do two, and then three. 
this is gonna be one, two, three. So like that one, two, three. And then we're gonna do three stitches in our darker or like spot color. We're gonna do three stitches in our spot color. So and we're still only doing single stitches, I'm just focusing on the color placement. So we're just doing single stitches and I'm just showing you where to place the colors. So we do three stitches in that. Then we're gonna do one, two, three. Okay, hold up. So one, two, So we're gonna do, f one, two, three. yeah. So we're gonna do five single stitches, and then on these two right here, we're gonna do um, two. We're gonna do two or three. Hold up, sorry. We're gonna do three um, in our dark pink color. Sorry, I'm marking something in the pattern. <laughs> We're gonna do three in our darker pink color right here. So we're gonna go one, two, three. So we had our dark pink spot, we did five singles and then we did three more in our darker pink and now the rest of the way is gonna be in lighter pink. Uh, then we'll move our C-clip up. So that was row three. Um, we're gonna be on row four now. And we're gonna put the, yeah, we're gonna put pretty much all of them in the exact same spot. So these three are gonna be dark pink again and the first two over here are gonna be dark pink as well. So it's pretty easy to figure out where to put these. So you just do light pink until you get to the dark pink loops. And then once you get to the dark pink loops, you're gonna do dark, pink stitches on all those loops. So you just do dark pink. Like that. And I need to pick up more light pink bands. And once again, we're just gonna do light pink until we get to the darker loops. And then once we get to the darker loops, just these first two are gonna be in the darker color. So we just do these first two in the darker color. that and then the rest of the way is light pink and once you get to the c-clip you're just gonna move it up and that was row four so we're gonna do our final row row five sorry I'm marking things in my pattern um, so we're gonna do our final row, row five. And pretty much we're gonna put all the same spots in again. So we're gonna do, well actually we're not gonna do this last one. So we're gonna do the first two, not the last one, and then these two over here. And I'll walk you through it, of course. Also, I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast, but I feel like it kind of gets repetitive and I don't want this tutorial to be, I've already mentioned a bunch of times, long. So I'm also a little bit running out of camera space. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta cram it in. So yeah. Once again, we do light pink single stitches until we get to the dark pink loops. And then once you get to the darker color loops or your spot color, you're gonna do the first two. So just you're just gonna do two single stitches in your darker color. And then once you get to this final dark pink loop, you're just, you're just gonna go ahead and switch back to using light pink. Like that. And then we're just gonna once again do light pink all the way until we get to the other set of 
the darker loops or the spot colored loops whatever you want to call it and then once you get to these two um, darker colored loops we're gonna switch we're gonna do two dark colored stitches on those loops like that and then once again the rest of the way will be light pink and that was the last of the spots for this entire pattern so yay I love how the spots look but I feel like they're just so tedious to do and a lot of work for me on the explaining end because I'm like okay here's where you put your dark loops and it's a lot of a lot of stuff going on okay like that so that was our final row of single stitches. If we count around, we should still be at 16 loops. So let's count. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now we're gonna um, add our eyes into our cow. I forgot to mention this at the start, but I do use safety eyes for this guy. You can use beads if you have them this big, but I think these are six millimeter safety eyes. So you can use those if you want. You don't have to use the exact size I use. You can give your cow, cow bigger eyes. You can give them smaller eyes. But um, I'm just gonna put my safety eyes in real quick. And I'm gonna do this off camera because it's um, kind of, kind of. It's always hard to shove the backs on. But basically, basically, we're gonna put the eyes right here, or wherever you want the eyes. Is that where I want the eyes? <laughs> Oh, that looks kind of funny, but I kind of like it. Are they too close together? Maybe a little close together. Should I space them out a little bit more? Hmm, is that better? Or was the other one better? It's hard to tell. I think those are a little too spaced out. I'm gonna move it back over one. Yeah, that's where we want the eyes. And I'm just gonna cram the backs onto these guys. Okay, so now that we have shoved our eyeballs on, we do need to do one more row of single stitches. I thought we had did five rows of single stitches. We actually do six. I just noticed it in my pattern. So we've crammed our eyes on. We're going to do one more row of single stitches, and then we're going to close this guy up. And we don't have any spots on this row, so it's just one row of solid single stitches in our light pink color. And I'm just trying to go fast. Honestly, my camera, because I had to like cut it off obviously after I did the eyes, it is really running out of space. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna have to be like, please fit, because I am super low on space. And part of the problem is I have some videos I haven't finished editing yet. Like I filmed a video at the studio, which is kind of fun. No one was really there, so I took it as an opportunity to film a bit at the painting studio, but um I haven't edited the video, so it's kind of just sitting on my camera, so I really need to take it off, but, um, it's fine, it's fine. I should have just enough, just enough space to finish this cow tutorial, so we're good. Anyways, that was our final row of single stitches. And we should still be at 16 loops. Uh, I'm not gonna count, but you can count if you want to. So now we're gonna close up the cow head. Um, and we're going to do the same thing kind of we did earlier. We're going to be decreasing every other. So we increased every other earlier. So we just alternated between doing an increase and a single stitch. This is the same thing, but we're going to alternate between doing a decrease and a single stitch. So I will show you how to do that. And I know we decreased on the legs, but it was hard to see what I was doing. So I'm going to show you how to decrease again in case you were a little confused by that. So you can hopefully see it better. But... So this one's going to be our first single stitch, so the next one's going to be a decrease. And once again, with decreases, you grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and then you make a stitch. Like that. And we just keep doing that all, all the way around, alternating between doing a single stitch and a decrease. So because we just did a decrease, the next one will be a single stitch. And then we do a decrease, so inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. We just keep doing this all the way around. So we do a single stitch, then we decrease, single stitch, we do a decrease, ah. and 
yeah we just keep doing that single stitch decrease single stitch and then there's a decrease is gonna land on the one with a c-clip on it we're not gonna do it we're just gonna do a single stitch on the one with a c-clip move it up and now if we count around we should be at 11 loops so we should have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so now we're gonna stuff the head and then we're pretty much closing it up after this so we're gonna get our cotton balls and we're just gonna tear some up and stuff him and then yeah the cow comes together surprisingly quickly once like the head and body are done it's just like yep throw some ears on it's a cow so I'm not too worried I'm a little worried about space I feel like you can probably tell I'm going a little faster but that's just because I really don't want to run out of camera space because then I'll be in a predicament. And then I won't be able to finish the tutorial tonight and give it to you guys by Valentine's Day, which is kind of how I want to do it. So fingers crossed I can fit all the footage onto this SD card, which I think I can. It's still got plenty of space, but I still worry. Oh my god, I love this pink cow. I know it was hard to see. Probably wasn't best for tutorial purposes. But for my purpose of keeping him after, he is adorable. I'm also stuffing him off camera again. There are two things I hate doing on camera, and if you've watched multiple of my tutorials, you've noticed this. I hate stuffing on camera, and I hate tucking in tails on camera. It's like the two things I can't do. And I've been doing this for so long, yet I still, I still don't got it. The day I finally do be able to do those things on camera with ease. I'll be like a full master, I'll be like, that's it, I've done it all, I can retire now. No, I'm joking, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, now we're going to shove our hook back in, and we can actually take our C-clip out to this point, at this point, because we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease, and we're just going to decrease until we can't decrease anymore. We're just doing nothing but decreases until we have no loops left to pick up, pretty much. Ooh, that band just broke. And I'm almost there. I think this next one's gonna be my last one. So once you pick up your final decrease, you're gonna take a band, pull it through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you're just gonna tuck your tail in. Oh wow, that actually went smooth. Okay, so now we have a head, a cow head with eyes. We have a body. It's kind of hard to see because of how zoomed in we are. I'm definitely gonna have to zoom out in a few. But the final things we need to make is we need to make him some ears and we need to make him some horns. I've made one of each already. I'm gonna show you how to make them and then you're gonna pause and then make one more of each. But yeah, I'm going to show you how to do the ear, I'm going to show you how to do the horn, and I'm going to show you how to do the tail, and then we're going to put this whole thing together and we're going to have a cow, which is very exciting. So I'm going to start by showing you the horn just because it's really quick. So we're going to do the horn, um, and we're going to do the ear, and then I'll show you how to do the tail. So we'll do horn first. So you're going to want to get whatever color you want for the horn. On this guy, I made his horn, on this guy, I made his horns match his like nose so you can do that you can do it however you want honestly but I'm gonna sh show you I'm gonna do mine in one solid color um, dark pink as you can see I'm kind of just doing like a two colored cow so you can probably notice the pattern I've been doing but we're gonna start by wrapping two bands around our hook um, four times so I wrapped them twice I'm gonna wrap them again then I'm gonna take two bands double them and I'm going to slide that cat band onto these two bands and I'll be really honest with you this is really hard to do with the hook I have or I don't know if it's the hook I have or just in general I have such a hard time sliding this on so I'm going to slide it on off camera but you're going to slide your cat band onto those two doubled bands I don't know why it's so hard for me to do on camera but it is Apparently hard to do 
off camera as well. <laughs> Can't get the final one to slide over. There we go. Okay, we're good. So you'll slide it on, put both ends back on your hook, take another band, double it, and then you'll just slide this onto those two bands. Put both ends back on your hook. Like that. Sorry, it's blurry. Like that. And then we're gonna take one that's like a band that's in our main color, and then we're just gonna pull it through, and then we're just gonna set this aside. And that'll be a horn. So you're gonna wanna make two of these, this is one. You're gonna wanna pause, make another one. But I'm gonna show you how to do the ears. So, I'm sorry, I'm picking up a few more bands. We're gonna start with whatever color you want for the end of your ears. Usually I do make this color match the spots, so you can keep that in mind. You could do it a different color, but once again, I'm starting with my darker color. So you just wanna start with whatever color you want for like the end of your ear. We're gonna wrap a band three times around our hooks, our hooks, our hook. And then we're gonna be putting six stitches into this cat band. So just like we did earlier, we've done two of these already. So we're gonna pull the cat band onto this band. Both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one. Go back in through the cat band. Pull a band through just the cat band. Both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. Push the loop from last time over as well. And we're gonna repeat those steps we just did four more times. So we have six loops in total in this cat band. And once again, I'm going fast because we did this at the start and it feels kind of repetitive. So hopefully you've got the hang of it. If you're still a little lost, you can pause and go to where I did this at the start and I'll explain it a little slower for you. But hopefully you've got the hang of it. You've already made two of these already in this tutorial. So once you're pretty sure you have six loops in your cat band, you're gonna wanna count to make sure. So you'll start by counting the one in your hook. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And once you've made sure you have six, you're gonna go in through this first loop here. And we're gonna switch back to our main body color. So whatever color that is for you, for me it's light pink. And I'm picking up bands again. And we're gonna pull this band through everything on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then we'll be putting our C-clip on this one. Like that. So now we're gonna do two rows of single stitches around this, um, basically the same we did as before. We're putting one stitch per loop all the way around. And at the end of each of these two rows, you should still be at six loops. It's a little harder to go around this because of how tiny it is, but it's, it's not too bad. I've done tinier, so. <laughs> Okay, so that was one row of single stitches. Like I said, we want to do two rows, so I'm gonna go ahead and go around and do one more. Ah, I keep dropping things. Okay, so that was two rows of single stitches. And we're gonna take our C-clip out at this point because now we're just gonna decrease everything until it's closed. So same as before, just decrease until we can anymore. I actually, by the second decrease, I think it's more or less closed. So I'm just gonna pick, so I'm just gonna pick up that decrease on my hook and then pull a band through everything. And we're just gonna use this band to tie into our cow, but we're gonna just set it aside like this for now. And that's one ear. So you're gonna wanna make two ears, two horns. And I'm gonna, after you do that, you're gonna wanna come back because I have to still show you how to make the tail. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So for the tail, 
We're going to start with two bands in our darker color. This is how the tail looks, by the way, by the way so you know what we're going for. But we're going to get three bands in our darker color. We're going to wrap them twice around our hook, each one of these bands. And then we're going to take our main body color, double it, slide these bands onto that doubled band. And now we're going to chain up, hold up. So now we're going to chain up six more um, doubled bands in our body color, and then that's pretty much it for the tail. So we're just going to chain up. Six bands in our body color. So that's one. Oh my god, this is kind of hard to do. Two. <laughs> Doubling bands is always so hard. Three. Four. <laughs> Five. And this is our final one. So six. And we're gonna want to count to make sure we did six. So you, it's technically gonna look like seven because of this first one. So you should count. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you've made sure you have chained up enough, you're just gonna take a band, pull it through everything, and then that'll be our tail. So what we're going to do now is I think we're going to finish attaching everything onto the head and then I'm going to show you how to attach the head onto the body but attaching everything to the head is pretty straightforward. Um, I usually put the horns about right here so I'm just going to come right here on top and then I'm going to use that band we pulled through to tie it in And then that'll be where our horn is. I'm not going to tuck any of the tails in until I'm happy with where everything is. So we have one horn. I'm going to come right here. Put the other horn in. If it would cooperate. Oh shoot, I just accidentally pulled the band out. Oops, 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 oops. Don't accidentally pull the band out. But yeah, you pretty much just use that band to tie it in. Sorry, we're doing repairs off camera. Because <laughs> I kind of messed it up. But it's okay. So once you have his two horns on, I think I may have tied them a little too close together. See, it's always hard to tell if you tied them too close to together or if you just need to tuck in the tails because sometimes that helps. Um, but I'm going to attach the ears. I like to attach everything very close to the top of the head, as you can tell. And once again, we do the same thing. So we just use the band we left loose to tie the ears into the head. I think, I don't think you need to tie the ears down again. Actually, yeah, you probably do. I usually tie the ears down one more time. So I'll tie it in using that band. And then I'll go through part of the ear and part of the cow head. And I tie them one more time because I think once they're tied twi tight twice um, they hold a little bit better. We're just going to tie the other ear in doing the same thing. Oops. And once again I have pulled the band out. <laughs> oh my why am I just like snagging everything today? We're gonna go ahead and tie the other ear in and then we're gonna go through part of the ear again and just tie it down again because it helps hold it better I feel. I think you should tie your ears down twice. I think because they're a little bit bigger it just helps with everything. And then you're just gonna wanna look at your cow and if you're happy where everything is we're just gonna tuck in the tails. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck in all my tails real quick and then I'll show you how to attach your cow head to your body. Okay, so I also zoomed this out a little bit because we are going to be attaching the cow head to the body and we need like more space so you can see what's going on. But I just hid all the tails in for my cow head and now he looks perfect. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick whichever side of my body. Um, this body is pretty much a square, so it doesn't matter which side you choose. Just pick whichever side you wanna put your head on and you're kinda just gonna place them together like this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through part of the head and it's easiest to do this if you just hold them right up against to where you want them because then you just go through like part of the head go through part of the body and you're just going to slip knot these two together so you're just going to take a band pull it through everything and then tie them together I think it is helpful to hold the body and head just right up against each other where you want it and then just see what bands kind of like line up and then just go through both of those and tie them together Sorry, I was adjusting where my hook was through. You can see I tied it one time. You do want to tie this a couple times. I think three or four. So I'm going to go through like the bottom of the chin here. And about right here. And just tie it together. And you don't want to tie right next to each other. You do kind of want to space them out a little bit. So I kind of did one on like the bottom, kind of the top. So now I'm going to do one on like the sides. So I'll go through like right here and then maybe like right here. Just tie that together. I think usually like by four times you're pretty good. You don't really need to do it more. Five times maybe, but I've never really had to tie it like a whole bunch of times. I think by like the fourth stitch your head should feel pretty attached. This guy is pretty big though, so Tie it however many times you feel like you need it. Uh, for this guy, I'm going to tie him five times because I'm going to tie one a little higher on the head here. I'm just going to tie it together like that. And as you can see, I've left all the slip knots hanging, and that's just because if I don't like where my head is, it's like a lot easier to just untie it and move it. But I do like where my head is, so I'm just going to tuck all my tails into my cow. And now all we have to do is attach our tail, and I think we're done. So now you guys kind of see what I mean by like this cow comes together really quickly after you um, after you after you make the head and the body it's just like this cow is so big and they take so long and I felt like I couldn't really like cut any bits out of the tutorial because then it's like oh you're not gonna know where to space the spot so it's kind of hard but um it's okay okay. So I hit all my tails, this is how my cow looks, he looks adorable, but I'm just going to attach the tail, and you probably guessed about how we're going to attach this, we're just going to go through part of the cow, and then use that band we pulled through to tie our tail in. The tail's super easy to attach, um, but there is a little bit of a trick to the tail to get it to face downwards after we hide our tail in. But the way to get the tail to face down instead of up like this is you're just gonna come right here and you're just gonna pull upwards on this first stitch. So you're gonna go through like, you're gonna go through it and you're just gonna pull upwards on it and then it'll fix the direction it's going and it'll go down like that. So I think that is it for this cow tutorial. It's kind of hard to show you my whole cow because of how zoomed in we are. Let me, let me see if I could zoom out a bit. Oh, you might see my messy desk, but that's okay. So you can see the full cow we've made together. Oh, I love the strawberry cow, even if it was kind of hard for you guys to see. She looks so much better in real life, and when I post her on Instagram, I think you'll see how cute she is. But um, I think that is it for this tutorial. So if you make a big cow, definitely share it with me. I feel like there's so many different color combos you guys can do for these guys, and I'm so excited to see what kind of color combos and things you come up with. Um, I really do enjoy seeing every time you guys make my things. I know I'm really bad when I'm in school about liking and commenting, but I really do love seeing you guys make my stuff. So yeah, tag me if you make one. If you make a baby... <clears throat> oh my god, my voice is starting to go for real. But I'll link in the iCard to the baby cow tutorial in case you want to make a baby cow. But we have a bunch of cows now, and I love them all. Um, those two cows are actually on my Etsy shop, which is linked down below if you want to check me out. Also, just a quick mention, um, I am in school right now, so if uploading is a little inconsistent, that's why. But if you want to see what I'm up to, I've been posting a lot on Instagram, even just what I'm up to in school. So if you want to see what I'm doing 
and why maybe tutorials are sparse, you can check me out on Instagram at gingercell. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I'm always working on new designs, so there'll be more tutorials coming soon. When? I can't say, but soon. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I can't wait to see your cows. Literally, don't forget to share them with me. But I think that is it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next one comes out, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.